excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is The Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And this week, we have yet another A24 movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, man, they they love making movies for us to do on this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, what, the f- fourth? Fifth? It's up uh, there. Let's see. We did Sacred Deer. Yeah. It Comes at Night. Yeah. Hereditary. Yeah. Midsummer. Midsummer. So this is, this is number five, this I think? This is five. I think so, yeah. Damn. I mean, we're racking them up. I mean, hey, it, I, it's pretty safe to say if A24's logo is at the front of a film, I will be biased towards liking it mm-hmm. for the for the most part. For the you most know what's part. funny, too? There's a little hint, a little uh, peek behind the curtain. Next week, also an A24 movie. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> uh, well, we're not talking about that one. We're talking about this one. So welcome, everyone, uh, to the Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, if you are new to the show, first of all, thank you for tuning in. What we like to do here on the show is watch movies like the movie we're watching today, uh, where things don't really wrap up too nicely at the end. Things are a little, uh, little dour or a little confusing or just don't leave you with that sense of fulfillment. Like, that, there's something missing, and uh, we try to find what that thing is. We try to find something good to say about the ending, something positive to come away from the movie with. And this week, we are looking at the 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, uh, Jonathan Glazer film, Under the Skin. Um, Mally, this was your pick. Yeah, it was. So why don't you tell me why we're doing this episode this week and what your uh, first time seeing the movie was like. Uh, I just thought it, you know, I thought it would be an interesting uh, movie to cover um, yeah. because it def- <laughs> it definitely fits our criteria. And yes, it does. I know. I don't think you and I have never really like me and you discuss a lot of movies, mm-hmm. but this is one that I realized I was like, man, me and Dustin have never really talked about that movie. So mm-hmm. doing it on the show will be really interesting because a lot of the movies we cover, you and I have talked a little bit about before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've mentioned multiple times how every time Dustin sees a movie, he texts me like, hey, dude, <laughs> have you seen this? And that always means Dustin wants to cover it on the show. Which and is a little bit of a spoiler, I it's guess. Always, it's <laughs> always, always a massive spoiler. Yeah. Always a massive spoiler. <laughs> like literally un uh yeah, I don't know. Um but yeah, I thought this would be a very interesting movie because it's I don't know, we have a history on this show of like the quieter like not dialogue heavy movies mm-hmm. not being our longest episodes like usually like what was it? The Strangers, I think, still clocks in as our shortest episode because it's like 30 so, yeah. minutes long. It's like, yeah, it's, another, it's like 40, I think. It's real short. Yeah, but this one, I feel like I actually have, again, I'm, it's a weird time for me. I've been taking notes on the movies we watch lately. It's insane. Four it's, seasons it's in. Four seasons in. I'm finally putting <laughs> work into this show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I got I got a heavy little bit of notes here. Um, I think this is going to be a very interesting movie to talk about in regards to the themes, how it relates to its source material, that sort of thing. Yeah, this is this is my first time seeing this movie. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, there is this movie has given me vibes of another movie. I don't know if it's one we've done on the show or not, but I could not for the life of me place it. But it's it's weird it's a weird movie i mean that goes without saying yeah. if you've seen it there's um, there's something right up front i want to address okay okay so this is for all the perverts out there that only know this movie because scarlett johansson gets naked in it mm-hmm. just stop touching yourselves now <laughs> this is not a sexy movie especially given the context of why her character is nude 
Like, yes, we can all agree that she is an attractive actress, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you should be playing with yourself while watching this movie. (laughs) Stop being gross. Yeah, if you want that, you could go over to her where you don't even need to see her. You can just hear her. Yeah. (laughs) If you really want to do Um, that. (laughs) Dude, and it's interesting because this movie was post Avengers. I know. So she'd she'd been in some Marvel stuff like Iron Man 2, Avengers, which is awesome. Like she can go from being a part of a massive comic book universe to doing a weird art house flick like this. Mm -hmm. And like anyone that says Scarlett Johansson is a bad actress, like, I'm sorry, like with this movie and like. Most of her stuff, like I think Scarlett Johansson's a fine actress. Like I, in the, mm-hmm. I, she's so good in this. Yeah. Like it's insane how good she is. Yeah, I actually I want to talk about ScarJo when we get into the movie. Like that's my my first big note. Um, but before we get there, um, let's talk about uh, Under the Skin in terms of the details surrounding it. So I think the year is 2013. Uh, director, as we mentioned, is Jonathan Glazer. Uh, this movie stars Scarlett Johansson, Paul Brannigan, Robert J. Goodwin, Christoph Haddock, Michael Moreland, Scott Diamond, and Jeremy McWilliams. Basically, the only one person that is of any recognizable, uh, like anyone that I know, was ScarJo. Like, I didn't recognize anyone else in this movie. Um, well, yeah, a lot of the other people, um, mm-hmm. like, for instance, excuse me, um, like, they weren't actors. Like, yeah. Um, a lot of the people she lures to the van, like the pedestrians, I think maybe the directions guy that gives her directions, didn't even know they were in a movie until after they'd been lured to the van. Yeah, I read like, that too. <laughs> so much of this was shot literally with like hidden cameras. And mm-hmm. there's a few examples that I'm going to talk about when we get into the movie. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, that's it's crazy. Like how there's like there, there's no one in this movie. Yeah. And Without... even, like, Scarlett Johansson is a little unrecognizable. Like, obviously, it's her, but, like, mm. apparently, like, when they were shooting this, they would just send her into crowded areas, and no one was like, oh, my God, it's Scarlett Johansson. And it's interesting, too, because this is... Here's what I'll say. I think Iron Man 2 is the movie that really put her on the map. Like, she had done work before that, like, Lost in Translation and stuff like that. But Iron Man 2 really brought her into, like, the mainstream, like, the common household name that she is now. And really? You is, think so? I I mean, well, I guess we can go ahead and jump into it. Here's let's let's cover Scarjo real quick. So I I find it interesting like her herself is an interesting A-list actor because you know, we mentioned the Avengers, she can do those big budget movies like that, like the big franchise stuff. But then she can do stuff like this and then she can also give like great voice acting performances like she does in her yeah. And then she can also do more subdued and charming stuff like Lost in Translation. So, and interesting enough, like when I was writing my notes for this movie, those were the first four films that I thought of her about. And that's exactly what her top four is on IMDb, which I thought was pretty funny. Like, of all, all the stuff she's done. Yeah. Like, see, I think the thing that really put her on my radar um, was The Island. Yes. You're right. Um and then she also did she did a couple she had that little string of Woody Allen movies and then the Black Dahlia was another one where I was like, Oh, that's Scarlett Johansson, okay. And then yeah. obviously like the prestige, I was like, Okay, Scarlett Johansson's like fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, you, you kind of forget like that she does like that she did these like minor like nuanced roles. Like she plays Janet Lee in that Hitchcock movie. Yeah. With, well uh, and then let's not Anthony forget Hopkins. maybe my favorite role of hers ever. Home Alone um, Three? <laughs> well i actually i i like home alone 3 dude i did too but i completely um, forgot she was in that movie <laughs> also don't forget hey shout out eight-legged freaks um mm-hmm. no my personal favorite role of hers as the woman in the music video for justin timberlake's what goes around mm-hmm. comes mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. um and then she's, yeah. like, she's like in the spirit like he's just not that into you and all of that stuff was pre-iron man 2 that's very true, but my my argument was just that I think Iron Man Two is what like we know her because we're film I buffs. think no I think a lot like she was pretty big, pretty big before Iron Man Two. Iron Man Two made nerds aware of her. That's very true, but nerds kind of now run the culture. I mean, we're recording this um, the That's day fair. after DC fandom. We're like. Every like all those trailers that dropped last night were. Ex- I could do an hour long podcast on just the Batman trailer mm-hmm. alone. I could do that on the Wonder Woman eighty four trailer because I loved it. 
Interesting. <laughs> no. Interesting. Um, All right. <laughs> Dustin, after we finish recording, we're going to talk about okay dc fandom a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but no i feel like this movie like you mentioned it's a bold choice because this is you know a year or two after the avengers comes out and this is still i mean she had already been working for about you know a decade but i feel like this is still early on in her career because you know after the avengers comes out it's just boom 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 it's like this her uh the, the yeah like 20 the jungle book 2013 2014 were like her two big years because yeah. after avengers she had don john this her lucy chef mm -hmm. winter soldier mm -hmm. and lucy all in the span of two years like you could not like scarlett johansson was in every fucking movie in 2013 2014 yeah. it seems like and most of them were pretty good Mm -hmm. Like I, I like Don John. I thought it was a good oh. movie. Oh, I know you don't <laughs> like it. Um, I love this fucking movie. Her is damn near perfect. Fantastic. Chef was really good. Winter Soldier was the best MCU movie to ever come out at the time. Mm -hmm. Lucy was a dud. Lucy was a dud. I tried watching that movie twice and couldn't get more than like. 10 15 minutes into it yeah it's 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 rough it's rough yeah. but we're here for under the skin mm -hmm. um i keep budget. wanting to call it under <laughs> her skin but it's not under her skin it's the skin it could be her i mean it's maybe it is under her skin so uh the budget is 13.3 million and it managed to gross 5.7 million dollars worldwide and currently sits at an 85 percent on rotten tomatoes dude and Hell yeah, it earns it earns that eighty five percent. Yeah, in my opinion, like yeah, again, yeah. I fucking love this movie. Okay, so well, if um you're you know new to this uh, property, if you've never seen Under the Skin, and you're curious as what we're talking about, why don't we get into the trailer, which doesn't give anything away, so <laughs> you might still yeah, be confused. I've I vaguely remember this trailer, but not very much. Well, this will be a good uh, trip down memory lane then. So uh, here we go. Let's go. A24, I'm in. Exactly. Like, seriously, every trailer, that logo pops up and it's like, I'm sold. Yeah, same. <laughs> Just give me the title, I'll see it. <laughs> that body looks like Felicity Jones. It, it did look familiar. I couldn't place who she looked like, but yeah, now that you mention it. So you live alone? Yes. I think I'm pretty. I like her gorgeous. Her accent's pretty good in this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it to her. Come to me. What a bold old fucking statement from the critic to the next Kubrick. I mean, with how this trailer's cut, I can see that. Yeah. When was the last time you touched someone? Yeah. That's a good trailer, dude. Mm -hmm. Holy and shit. That's about as much dialogue as in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's they used every line of dialogue right there. Um like dude, it just it it doesn't it doesn't give you anything. Mm hmm It's just like I mean, hey, you're gonna this is gonna be some weird shit. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing about the trailer though is it really relies heavily on the pull quotes that it pulls. Um but you know, there's not, I mean, how about this? Why don't you explain in the broadest of terms what the plot of this movie is? Not the themes, just the plot. Because it's pretty simple, I think. Alien lures humans 
for something. Right. That okay. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the only one. I because I picked up pretty early on. Okay, this is an extraterrestrial um, luring subjects in for something. And here's what I thought was happening. I thought okay. Got, by the hold, time they hold, got is this, is this one of Dustin's infamous <sighs> hot takes? I, I don't think so. I think this is this tracks pretty well. Um, uh, you're gonna side with the logger at the end, aren't you? <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> Um, the dis- the disfigured man, the, um, who apparently that was that's a genuine, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about that. We'll talk yeah. about that when when she gets him in the van and she's talking about his hands and she's fixated on his hands and she brings him back to her house. I thought she was selecting men to take back and picking like something of theirs that she wanted in particular like i thought she was like for example the disfigured man's hands is what she wants the other guy maybe she wants his cheekbones or something like that like picking and choosing parts that would ultimately be used to create the final figure of what she wants to become does that make sense like almost like frankensteining a body for herself i get it um i don't think that was the intention at all. Clearly not, movie, because by the time they end of the movie, I'm like, well, I, I'll bet um, my plan goes out the fucking window. So I have well, no idea what she well, was doing. On that subject, this so this movie was this it's loosely based on a book. Yes. And while I've never read it, it seems like loosely based is very accurate. Yeah. They basically took some overall themes and made the movie around that. She's an alien. She kidnaps hitchhikers. She becomes disillusioned with it. Yeah. And like originally this was going to be a like like the first drafts of the script were much closer to the book and like big like special effects heavy like and it focused on a male and a female alien mm-hmm. which was kind of which was kind of like how the book was and apparently Brad like Pitt. Brad yeah Brad Pitt was attached at one point mm-hmm. but Jonathan Glazer and uh the writer um something Campbell I think Walter Campbell was his name well, yeah, yeah yeah Walter um so they took out all of that basically like they got rid of any scene that didn't have the female in it Mm -hmm. and i love the way like the comparison he said it was like taking a big extravagant rock band and turning it into pj harvey (laughs) i love that and then he then he said he wanted he didn't want to film the book but he wanted to make the book a film and Mm -hmm. i think that's fucking brilliant and i think that's like that's pretty much exactly what he did yeah because while yeah loosely based is so accurate because there are similarities like in the basic 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 plot and themes but super super stripped down yeah i mean here's what i'll say about the movie i think it's okay to have a movie that doesn't spoon feed you what it's trying to do it's totally fine but I still need the spoon. Like I still need to be able to do the work myself. And I feel like this movie really doesn't give you enough to understand what it's doing. Like it, I started piecing it together early on, but then all of my theories kind of went out yeah. the window because nothing was aligning. And I st- like this movie is like someone gave you a bowl of soup mm-hmm. and a fork. Yeah. You're still getting <laughs> little bits of it. But not enough to really well, see, I, digest, and that's what I love about it. Like I don't like everything comes together in this movie for me. Like it all tracks. Mm-hmm. Like definitely the first time I was kind of doing what you were doing, like trying to piece it together, mm-hmm. and finding myself a little disappointed that what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. But mm-hmm. every time I've rewatched this movie, I've grown to like it more. Because now that I like, I don't know, like this rewatch again, I was like, God, this movie's fucking awesome like can can i ask one question yes it's the only question you can ask me this whole episode that's fine because this is the only question i need what is the purpose of the motorcycle guy i fucking knew that was the question (laughs) because that is literally my next note okay um so the way i see it and i'm gonna kind of compare to the book again because i actually i did look up a lot about the book because i was a little more i was very curious about it um, I kind of want to read it. 
Um, so I think they're basically her handlers. Like yeah. in the in the books, her race has a class system with like most being forced to live underground and the elite, quote unquote, living on the surface. I think the motorcyclists are kind of the leftover representations of that. Like they seem to follow her around, like kind of cleaning up after her. And yeah. towards the end, they, well, they, they don't we'll do wait, anything. We'll wait. We'll wait until <laughs> we get there for that. But that, well, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. There is really no resolution to the motorcyclists, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of fine with that. But they were, you can kind of read into what they were gonna build up to before, like. Well, before the logger, basically, um, they're like the Knights of Ren of this movie. They they're all hype, no substance. <laughs> they don't do anything. That was the. I mean, I, even if like the the final shot of the motorcyclist when he's looking out over the cliff, um, even if he would have just seen the body, that would have been enough for me to be like, oh, okay, he failed in his mission to like. See the sp- way I always read into that shot. Is that because they seem to just be able to sense where she's at at all times? Yeah. I think that last shot of the motorcyclist is him sensing, like, oh, it's dead. Yeah. So he doesn't have to go find the body. That's <sighs> how that's how I read into it. I know that's not enough for you. No, but... no, no. That's fine. That's fine. I just... But you know what it makes me think of? Um Killing of a Sacred Deer that we did on the show. You know how, like, the first time you saw it, um, you don't understand what's happening until, one, you know, the villain of the movie tells you sp- explicitly what's happening. Right, and right. On, you know, I was, I don't need a full-on exposition heavy scene of the person saying, here's what the movie's about. But, like I said, I need, I need something else. I feel like this movie is, like, giving that's me fair, that's fair. 75% of the story. And while I don't need 100%, I do need at least 85. Yeah. Well, let's get into the actual story, because I want to talk about the very first scene, that intro scene. Okay. Where she's um, taking the clothes from the dead body that kind of looks like Felicity Jones. Yes. Dude, the sound design is oh, yeah. r- really off-putting, but effective. Like, it's overly loud and grainy. Like, you hear every move that's made like every rustle of clothing like her taking a step her moving in any way like you hear it all and the way it's contrasted with the super simple like silhouette way it's shot it's so good yeah no i was definitely getting like that with the score getting heavy aronofsky the score yeah, I was definitely getting the he- heavy score, <laughs> heavy Aronofsky, and maybe even some, some Kubrickian vibes. Like this score sounds like it'd be left over from like Requiem for a Dream or even The Shining. Honestly, well, like, dude, in I think it was last year, Pitchfork named uh, this score by I think it's Mika Levy. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but Pitchfork named this one of the best scores of all time. It's now, really good. I don't know if it's that good, but goddamn, no, it, work, it works but... incredibly well in this movie. Like it sets the tone for every scene without being overbearing. Like scoring a largely dialogueless movie can be really tough, and I think she nailed it. Yeah, no, it's um, definitely unsettling. It definitely fits the vibe of the movie. Um, can, I, can I tell you my one of my final notes of this movie? Like once I started, like settling in to to what what's this that movie you tell me if this sounds accurate to you um i put <laughs> this movie is like if derek c in france directed a script by yorgos lanthimos and the guy who edits aronofsky's movie got final cut <laughs> like I got little uh, bits of- there, there's a little bit of nicholas winding refin in here too yeah yeah, like there's if, a little if, only God forgives this. Uh, in add here. add in that they let him do a script pass and he just cut out all the dialogue. <laughs> there you go. This it it hits yeah. all of those weird it, directors. It really it really does. It really it, does. It's got some Lars von Trier in there too. It's 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 out there, man. I mean, I, I will say I do I do like this movie. It's it's gonna be a tough rewatch just because like the pacing 
is deservingly extremely See, I slow. It, I liked it more as I rewatched it. Like I came to appreciate some stuff even more. Um, like the um, still at the beginning of the movie, like the mall scene, and I mean that whole scene. Um, kind of it gives you a good idea how this was shot, since they did a lot of it with like hidden cameras. And like just literally having Scarlett Johansson walk through public places. Yeah. Um, it's crazy that even though it was all shot so guerrilla style, it's such a beautiful movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's kind of hard to make an ugly movie when you're shooting in fucking Scotland. Like that place is just naturally gorgeous. But like, mm-hmm. I think it's like, I don't know. I just think it's a really interesting way to shoot this movie because it that style um, almost like like you're like not supposed to be watching this stuff. Like, yeah, it's very voyeuristic. Work, it works so well for this story because it feels mm-hmm. like you're spying on these characters the whole time, yeah. and it works perfectly since we follow. I'm just gonna call her the female since yeah. we follow the female the whole movie. Like she's in, with the exception of the few cutaways of the motorcyclist, she's in every scene of this movie. Yeah. No, they do they do a lot with little with the visuals. Like it's some striking it like almost reminiscent of two thousand one imagery. Like um uh, the one of my notes was I was like, I don't know the works of Jonathan Glazer that much, but I definitely definitely know he's done some music videos. And yeah. I was right. <laughs> I've he's, so he did a movie called Birth and then Sexy Beast. I've seen Sexy Beast. I have not seen mm-hmm. Birth. Yeah. With uh, but yeah, his, yeah, his music video repertoire is great, though. Yeah, Radiohead, Blur, Nick Cave, like he's. I, it, it makes sense too, because like the first two, three minutes of this movie, all like I said, very visual, and you get some of that stuff too, like when um the guy from the club is in the the black abyss and touches yeah. the 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 surfer. Like that, it is a like I said, a lot with a little. It's some beautiful. Yeah. He also imagery. he also did the music video for the song "Treat Me Like Your Mother" by the Dead Weather, which you haven't seen that video. It's one of one of my favorite music videos of all time. It's literally just Jack White because he's the drummer in that band, and Allison Mosshart, the lead singer. It's the two of them like in a field next to like a suburb, mm-hmm. like a suburban neighborhood. It's the two of them with machine guns just slowly walking at each other and just unloading. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> fucking dude, I know it sounds kind of dumb, but it is so fucking awesome the way like just it works so well with the song. But anyway, under the skin, it's a movie. It is a um, movie. So, let's t- I want to talk about the first dude she captures. Okay. So, <laughs> she lure- lures this guy, takes him back to wherever and like opens the door and this dude is so headstrong about getting laid mm-hmm. that he doesn't notice that he's walking into a dark black liquid void. Yeah. Like he he gets so naked so quick. Like she has taken off her coat and her shirt and he's already just full dick swinging. Yeah. yeah. Like this dude is thirsty. Speaking of which, did this movie came out two years before the TV series. Did this movie inspire like that inky blackness that Stranger Things uses? Because it's a, it's pretty much exactly the same. Like whenever she's using her power, she's in that infinite oh, right. black void. I mean, I didn't really think about that because I don't know. I mean, it's possible. Um, I mean, it would make sense because both are being used in a context where it's out of reality you know what i mean like and it's yeah identical like the effect which it's fine it works in both instances but that was the that was the first thing i noticed well, when it was happening speaking of i mean what do you think the void is um because I, I i have my theory or explanation but i'm curious as to what yours is i don't know i mean it's not a physical representation i know that it's not like an actual room in that house right see i i think it's a, a nest isn't the right word but like a almost like, a like a dev- web? almost like a kind of like almost like a device that harnesses the human bodies for whatever the yeah, aliens whatever are reason. using them for <laughs> and i kind of like that it's a little vague in the book 
I mean, they basically use humans as farm animals, like meat and such. Mm -hmm. I like that it's a little more vague in the movie. Again, Mm -hmm. I like vague movies, apparently, because I just do. Yeah. I mean, I do like when when we finally get to see what's under that abyss, too, with the guy from the nightclub. And it's it was also that reminded me a lot of uh, the visuals of the sunken place from Get Out, very similar. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. When when he touches the surfer guy who just like evaporates pretty much, like collapses in yeah. on itself, and then we see it's such a cool looking effect. It is, and then when we see like you know the strange red liquid like getting flushed out of that trough, mm-hmm. like. I still don't understand what it's all supposed to mean. I I could sit down and I can do some homework and I can, you know, plot my theories. But I wish the movie would just give me just an inkling of an idea of what's happening. You know, I mean, I I like the vagueness, too, to an extent. But by the time the credits roll, I wish I just understood. I mean, I get her character development of... You know, she she finally sees herself in that mirror and which is interesting, too, because I noticed in the car when she's in the van, she never looks into like the review mirror or the side mirrors or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting that that the disfigured man um, is the one to make her do some self introspection. You know what I mean? Which is I also want to talk about that, too, because I love that they choose to skip over the discussions that she has with the other men that she leads in. Like we kind of skip over the obvious conclusion of those uh, back and forth where she's like, Hey, do you want to come back to my place? You know, it's usually just like, Oh, do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, I think you're very pretty. And then they pull up to the house with her. We get to see what seemingly seems like she's using her seduction, but also feels like it's coming from a place of like genuine, human interaction and kindness like when she asks you know she's like do you want to touch my face it's like right right it's interesting because i don't know in that moment i think i come down on the side that she's just this is what she normally does but she's tailoring it to his i don't want to say weakness of just wanting human inter- interaction but i don't know well, man like i t- talk talking about um I don't want to call him the disfigured guy. I'm going to call him Adam because that's the actor's actual name. That is name. his name. I'm, I think um, in the script he's labeled as dis, dis, deformed man. I'd I'm, say, yeah, I don't think any of the characters actually have names in the script. Um, so this this actor actually has neurofibromatosis, I think mm-hmm. is what it is, because mm-hmm. um, they didn't want to use prosthetics. And they actually, like, they got a charity called Changing Faces that, like, supports people with facial defigurements. Like, they helped, like hire this guy pretty much Mm -hmm. and he is the one that actually suggested some of the lines and the ways in which she lures him to go with her like some of that stuff was his suggestion like this is you know try this this and i was like and that's fucking that's that's brilliant like that's fantastic and something interesting i noticed that so each time she lures someone it seems like it takes more and more for her to get them to go with her. And I think this ties into her character development of her slowly realizing how similar she actually is to humans. Yeah. So like the first guy, literally all she does, she like walks in, he gets naked. She takes off her jacket and her sweater. Mm -hmm. And then he's captured the Mm -hmm. next time. She's like, she gets all the way down to her underwear. Mm-hmm. And then the guy's captured. But then with Adam, she literally is fully nude. And then it takes a minute for him to like actually follow her. Yeah. I mean, and he's I hesitant think, to go in the house. Well, too. and I think that sh- that also shows that she's starting to lack enthusiasm for her uh, work. Or so like she's so not trying think- as she's not trying as hard as initially and is forced to use her physical human form to get them to enter the void. Yeah. I I could be reading too much into it no, but I, I don't think know. You're I right. think there's I something mean, I think th- there's something there seeing as how sh- the following scene is her releasing Adam. So that's very true. So do you think it is then that her her plan is to assimilate these dudes like use something like capture them for whatever reason. I'm assuming it's 
to make her become more human, almost like a body snatchers kind of thing. Um, but the more she does it, the more human she becomes and develops empathy. Yeah, like the more the more time she spends around the humans, the more she. I mean, that that to... ties in with her self re- re- reflection in the mirror, like when she's getting retrospective, and that's why she releases him. And then, of course, the motorcyclist dude captures him and does something with him, puts him in the trunk of that car. Like, I think that's what is happening is the more she does it, the more human she becomes, which is why she tries to go to that restaurant and eat that cake. Oh, man. Her trying to eat cake and not being able to makes me so sad for two reasons. One, cake is delicious. Yeah, it looked like a pretty good piece of cake. Two, it shows how much she's grown to realize, like how similar her species and humans really are and like is starting to feel a lot more empathy towards them is actively attempting to be more like them yeah i think that's a great little scene yeah um yeah and oh (laughs) right before that as with the intro like after she's kind of gone rogue like she abandons the like she lets adam go she abandons the van. The motorcyclists find Adam and then seemingly are like, okay, we're going to go. We need to find her now. Like, she's gone rogue. Yeah. Um, It cuts to her walk, like, abandons the van, walks into the fog. And then as with the intro, she walks through the fog and we get that heightened sound design again, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And it, that super wide shot of her walking out of the fog. Yeah, it's great. On the road, like with the mountains in the background, you just see her in her like red sweater, like walking. God, it's such, such a beautiful. It's great. Such a beautiful scene. And I love the juxtaposition of the first half of this movie, like in the city, like in the nightclub, like on the streets, all that compared to the kind of later after she kind of gives up on her goal, on her job or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's all, like, Scottish countryside, mountains, fog, beautiful. Like, I I don't know. I think that's very interesting that, and it kind of goes with her character arc a little bit, too. Yeah. Starting to appreciate more of the natural things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, watching her kill that surfer was pretty hard to watch. And then seeing Uh, that baby. And then leaving the baby there? Holy shit. And then the motorcyclist leaves the baby there, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's interesting, too, that she, the first time the motorcyclist is introduced, he's picking up a woman, and it's just, that's how she gets her clothes, and then the rest of the time, it's just all men. So, it's like, seemingly, this is her first, because she feels experienced in this, but, like, this is seemingly the first time she's doing it with the first guy we see, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I yeah, I think it's implied like she's been uh commissioned for the first time at the be- at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, um I don't have too much until we get um, to the um, end. Um 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 um. Yeah. <laughs> um well, let's go ahead and go to uh the friendly Scottishman. Yeah, the guy she uh, meets on the bus. So, yeah, so this movie does a good job of making you want of or making you not want to trust the friendly Scottish guy because throughout this whole movie, men are shown as sexual deviants basically. So, when we finally meet one that's actually being helpful, we don't want to believe it. Yeah. Now, that being said, like when you first meet him, it's like, "Ah, he may not be as good as and whole as he seems." Like he might just be playing the whole nice guy long con thing, like housing her, carrying over the puddle in order. And, you know, he's just playing the long game to get the same goal as the other guys were in the early of this movie that she captured. Yes. Which, I mean, that being said, he does nearly reach that goal before she stops it. But. Part of yeah, me wants like, to believe that he wasn't doing the long con, that he was just a genuinely nice guy because like he feeds her he lets her sleep by herself he doesn't bother her oh no i i agree i think i think he is generally just a friendly scottishman but at first like you know you just get this feeling of like well hang on like because based off your experience with all the other male characters in this movie who are all just like fucking sexual fucking dudes like lustful motherfuckers like yeah when you first meet him you're like hang on like be careful. Yeah. 
Like be be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, it's it's weird, man, because like that guy, he does seem like a nice person. I I don't. Where did he take her? To like an abandoned castle. Yeah, dude, it's Scotland. There, those are There's just uh, everywhere. There. But like, yeah, I I guess I didn't know. I didn't put together like that. That was like a date, or that like he was taking her to a specific place for a specific reason. But like, I think he's. I think he's just. Yeah, just like showing her, showing her around. around like, hey, yeah. look, yeah. check this shit out. Which, uh, if someone was like, "Hey, dude, you want to go check it out, Bannon Castle?" I'd be like, "Fucking yeah, I do." I will say, uh, Scottish television like looks terrible. Yeah, I can't imagine <laughs> it's great. Um, <laughs> it would look so bad. So, after he takes her to his house, we find we get the scene that made the comment trolling neckbeards lose their shit. Which was that? That's the female examining herself in the mirror. Oh, I must be unaware of this. Like, I knew this movie got memed a little bit, but I don't know the specifics of it. Well, no, this because this is this like this is the scene that if you type in Scott Johansson in Google, oh, it's, this okay. is the one that's going to come up is gotcha. her standing in front of the mirror. And like, as I said at the start, this is not a sexy scene and or movie. We like we're watching an alien come to terms with the idea of wanting to be something she isn't. Yeah. And wanting to shed her former self, like, like I, I like that scene not because I'm seeing Scarlett Johansson naked, but because of what it means for the character. Yeah, she's like this. Like she that is a been avoiding huge mirrors. character moment. <laughs> she's apparently been avoiding mirrors this whole time. Yeah. So it was interesting, like that she. Well, it's it's weird too because she like she observes like every part of her body, like looks at her curves, look at like how her muscles bend, how her joints work, and then. There's the sex scene with her and the and the nice Scottish guy and it's friendly Scottishman, friendly Scottishman, and you know he starts to have sex with her and then she freaks out because I guess she she's learning that there are internal things too, not just what she's seeing on the outside. Which yeah, she's feeling some sensations. Which I guess you could also put as like a, a metaphor for what she's doing been doing to these men too. That like oh these guys there's stuff on the inside too. It's not just what I'm seeing. Right, outside. yeah. So it was it was a nice little interesting take on that too. Like and it's it is kind of sad because like she's clearly you know she kisses him like which I guess is like her first real kiss probably. Um mm -hmm. and I think she's starting to develop human like romantic emotions for him and then Oh yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's it is it's kind of sad. It's like you know cuz the next interaction she has with a human is She's almost raped by him. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah, let's... Oh, the logger. Yeah. Dustin, I swear to God, if you side with this man... No, God, no. <laughs> well, I didn't even realize he was the logger. I thought he was just like a like a park ranger, and then that she found the logging truck. I didn't put it together that that was his truck. I thought it was super weird that it was just a, an abandoned logging truck just out in the middle of this... this park yeah, <laughs> it's no, super that, weird that, that, that's that's his truck Dustin. yeah I, I got that now <laughs> it's super weird also it, it's he says that you know oh there's all these nature trails in here and like i didn't see any paths that she was on it looked like she was just literally just stumbling through the woods <laughs> it didn't really seem like nature trails but you well know. you know yeah scottish trails are different it's just what we call you know what we call a clearing in the woods they call a trail can I tell you too? One of the most interesting traits that they give this guy, like is one it of the most, the fact that he's chewing yes! gum. Yes, yes. Oh, dude, My, that I, makes I, that makes the whole scene so much more uncomfortable. Well, I, I that just, he's just casually chewing gum while trying to rape this poor girl. I, I, my note literally says the audacity. To chew gum while you're trying to rape someone is like it's a level of hubris I can't even imagine. Like just the Dude, casual it's... nature of it. Yeah, and, like and it's it's odd too because he genuinely seems nice to her when he first meets her. You know, he's like, oh, you know, this is a good place to get lost in your thoughts. Uh, you won't get lost. It's clearly marked. Like I don't know, well, man. It's, he's another example of how disgusting men can be. God, yeah. Ugh. Like, dude, that whole scene is so hard to watch. Like, it, it's not like Last House on the left levels of fucked up, but yeah. it's still rightfully disgusting. Yeah, no, I to um, totally But agree. then that leads to the shedding scene, 
Yeah. Which is so visually interesting and cool looking. Like yeah, I love for, that for, it's subtle at first. Like for anyone that watched the TV show um version of Hannibal, which mm-hmm. if you haven't is it's fucking fantastic. great by it's the fantastic. way. It's so good. Um it reminds me a lot of the Wendigo in that, mm-hmm. uh, but minus the antlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it's really like because they don't you don't really see what he's backing away from at first. Yeah. But then you see like, oh, like the skin on her back is ripped and you just see like this blackness under it. Yeah. And it's, then it's she visually it's very striking. Just slowly peels her like mask off. It's and like then, a, sna- dude, a snake shedding its skin. Like. Yeah. And then like that shot of this like featureless black thing holding scarlett johansson's face in her hands which is still active like her face still like it's so crazy which is it's interesting because i knew this was coming just because anytime you you know when i was googling under the skin um like that's one of the first images that comes up so i like i knew this shot was coming oh really but the result of it like i didn't know this was the final part of the movie or what happens next was coming so it was pretty shocking honestly. yeah so of, do you want to recap what happens at the end here well so the logger attempts to rape her and rips her human suit and he mm-hmm. seems like he just runs away and she like you get this beautiful sequence of her shedding her skin pretty much and then psych turns out he was just going to get stuff to light her on fire yeah, like he d- <laughs> just pours like just gasoline all over. Douses her in gasoline and lights her aflame, and then like uh, it it's so fucked up and sad, but it's such an awesome visual of it's like a beautiful shot her of like this like black creature on fire running through this like snow covered forest. Mm-hmm. It's so fucked up and sad but so gorgeous like the contrasting imagery is so great Mm -hmm. and then quick cutaway to the motorcyclist standing on top of a mountain and just being like huh i can't censor anymore (laughs) yeah and then cuts back to just like this pile of flaming ashes and then that that's it yeah, that's that's the end of the movie. That's, that's the end. Like I just I just have a few um little notes that I want to cover before we get to the rest of the show, the silver linings and all that. Okay. Um I love that we finally got a rave scene with Sandstorm playing. I feel like I've never seen a movie that's used the most popular rave song of all time in a movie. I didn't dude, I I fucking ha- I fucking hate clubs so much. <laughs> I like do too. I I hate nightclubs. They just like literally this alien female in the club is me at a club. Like this dude's dancing on her and she's just standing there like just this blank expression on her face. I was like that's me at a club. Yeah. I don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Um I also thought it was weird that one of the dudes that she talks to on the side of the street, she's like what is that a tattoo of? And he says, oh, it's my name. And I'm like, who the fuck gets a tattoo of their own name? <laughs> super super in, weird. In, ca- in case you forget, bro. <laughs> I guess. Well, it's again, I, status. The, the funny thing is, I guarantee that was just one of those, like, one random the, yes. random people. Like, yeah. this this dude, act, like, this real person exists with his own name tattooed on his body. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. I, I actually do know someone that has their name tattooed on their body. Um, I'm not gonna say their name, but, like, I'll use my name as an example, but on their chest, they have tattooed, I am Mally. Wow. But it's their name, that's not my name. Is it (laughs) (laughs) Previous guest on the show. Um, Uh, no, it's actually a different guest. Oh, it's Um, been a guest on the show, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might It was Dylan. It was Dylan. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm joking. It's this no, this person is not has never been a guest on this show. Oh, okay. Um actually I don't know. I haven't it was someone I hung out with when I lived in Indiana, but I haven't spoken to him in years, so Is it because they have a tattoo of their name on their chest? It, honestly it was a factor. This person also <laughs> If any of my friends from Indiana who listen to this are gonna be like, Oh, I know exactly who he's talking about. Yeah. This person also has a 
skull tattoo on their armpit. Fun. Like, this person just is like, what would be the best tattoo to get in the most painful place? Well, it's better than those people that do the woman with her legs spread under their armpit. It's pretty fucking gross. Oh, that's a thing? Yeah. It's pretty, oh, that's... that's oh, it's I don't gnarly. like that. I don't um, like that. The only bit of trivia I want to talk about is, do you want to hear the uh, actresses that were considered for the lead role? Because oh, there's some interesting who was ones. it? Well, I don't, I'm curious, because Scarlett Johansson was attached to this movie for years before it mm-hmm. actually got made. Uh, who, they were considering who we Eva Green, which I think would also have been really good. The, yeah, this this seems like, this this is an Eva Green movie. <laughs> I could see it. Um, another one that I could see, January Jones. I think that would be see. Good. I I like January Jones, but I don't know if I see her in this role. I don't I don't know if I could buy it. Um, she I, I, she has that that kind of deadpan expression that I think she could do it. I I don't know. She's a little too like nine. Again, I'm kind of shoehorning, like kind of typecasting her her Mad Men role, but like she's very classically like 1950s beautiful. Yes. And I don't know if that would work for this character. Maybe. I mean, it it feels like it would be alien to that character to be in Scotland in present day. Yeah. Like, I, that's why I think it could work. Um, Olivia Wilde, which... Oh, my God. Maybe? Absolute, oh, fuck no. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I can uh, see that. Jenna Arderton, which I think... The first thing I think about when I think of her is she was uh, Strawberry Fields in Quantum of Solace, the James Bond movie. She's been in a few other things, oh, too. Oh, yeah. She, she was in that one movie where she plays like a kidnap victim. Uh, um, the know. Disappearance of Alice Creed, I yep. think it's called. Yep, you're right. Um, she was, that was a good, the titular that was a, Alice Creed. Yeah, that, that was a good movie, actually. I really liked it. Okay. And uh, Abby Cornish. I don't know who that is. Uh, she was in Three Billboards, Billboard, Sucker Punch. She's been in a few things, um, but no, I, I, I mean, ScarJo nailed it. Like that, now I can't see anybody else in this role really. Um, but yeah, I just thought all those actresses probably would have done just as, you know, just as good of a job. They're all interesting, interesting choices. Um, I don't. We can go to this section, but I have nothing for it. Uh, do you want to talk prop cop? Oh hell yeah. What, I got what, one, sir. I can't think of any prop in this movie. I mean, it's technically wardrobe, but I want that fur jacket. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I literally have a note that just says, "Dude, that fur jacket's fucking rocking." <laughs> All right. Uh like, yeah, cool, I have I, I it's weird. I really like her character's wardrobe. Like I think her outfit she rocks is so fucking rad. <laughs> it's 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 interesting like the light denim with the with the dark jacket. It's, it's and the bright ass red sweater. Yeah, um, yeah. I I have nothing for a prop cop. <laughs> I couldn't think. You of don't anything. even like. You don't want like the van. I, no, because where the fuck would I put that? <laughs> also, it's a real rapey van. Like you could make it less rapey. <laughs> what? Cut a hole in it and put windows in? Yeah, install a <laughs> window. Not worth it. Not worth all the trouble. You you take a vanless window. You put a window in it and it's automatically like 80 percent less rapey yeah fair and also if it's white repaint it so that's that's an interesting interesting just like notion that like if you just put windows in something it makes it less rapey by a huge percentage that (laughs) that applies to a lot of things dude you take like you take like a decrepit bedroom you introduce some natural light into it less rapey very true um why don't we get into uh, the whole purpose of the show, Silver Linings, for Under the Skin. What you got? All right. So the aliens will probably just send someone else to replace her. Mm-hmm. So they won't run out of harvested human bodies for whatever the fuck it is they're using it for. So that's you know I'm si- I, 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 You're siding I'm, with the aliens. I'm siding with the aliens. <laughs> I mean, all right, if I have to think of one that isn't siding with the aliens, I mean, the female learned a little little bit of empathy. Yeah, b- before she got lit on fire. And if this maybe this is like going to be the case for future 
subjects they send to. Like this is like the inevitable path of assimilating humans that you develop empathy. Um, mine was just that literally every single man that was seduced by her truly dodged a bullet because who knows what the fuck could have happened uh, if they did go all the way with this, like the, the nice Scottish man. Like, who knows what could have happened if he truly did uh, fornicate with her. <laughs> like, Oh, man. Do you think the motorcyclist went after him? Oh, I didn't think about. Well, I don't Shit. know. You think so? I don't know. I wonder. Because he was the only one that she didn't lure into the the black abyss. So maybe yeah. that's like maybe that's like a signal to the motorcyclist is like when she's in there, they know, OK, we're expecting a new subject. And then uh, when, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how this world works. So. Yeah, I mean, honestly, my silver lining is bullshit. This is a, a patented bronze lining, so yeah, we're so we're so we we're so good at bronze linings. Very maybe that's we're, we need to rename the show. <laughs> we're yeah, we're not the bronze linings playlist. Yeah, oh, we would avoid a lot more copyright issues. So, pick me up movie alternative. Uh, I got one that. It's, what it's is of, it? It's a fun movie. It's one of my favorite movies of the '90s, just because of how. Silly oh, okay, it good. Is. You're you're not you're not taking mine. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going with the faculty, which was oh, also dude a- aliens nice. trying to take over. I love that movie. John Stewart's hilarious. Oh, it. dude, that movie is fucking amazing. I so wish we could do it on the show, but alas, I know. Yeah. Honestly, we we really just need to take like. We need to do like a special run of like a couple episodes where we just do movies that we just want to talk about because the faculty would be one of them. <laughs> I would love to talk about that movie. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> like we we would talk. Let's be honest. We would talk about the faculty. Mm-hmm. We would talk about a ghost story. I, that was my number two. <laughs> um, and God, there's one or two other movies me and you have talked about how badly we want to do them, but we technically can't. I can't remember what they are though. Yeah. But we would definitely talk about the faculty in a ghost story. Oh, yeah. Um, so mine um, is kind of a funny pick because I will admit that this movie made me cry. Okay. Jojo Rabbit. Oh, more Scar pick, Joe. Pick and going with the Scar Joe. And dude, I don't want to spoil Jojo Rabbit for anyone, but the scene where um, Jojo finds the shoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's I I was very confused because like I could feel my jaw hitting the floor mm-hmm. and then like I held my hands to my face and then I was like, wait, what the hell? Cause there was water on them. <laughs> and I was very I was like, what is this stuff leaking? You're like out? Uh, the female in this movie learning about different things you can do. D- yeah, and Jojo <laughs> Rabbit taught me that. Um, so yeah, my pick me up movie might make you cry, but, but it's also hilarious. It, Jojo it, Rabbit's it is. hilarious. It's, God, it'll, it'll warm your heart. Yeah, definitely. It was in my top 10 of last year for yeah. sure. It's a great I actually, movie. Pl- I actually plan because I obviously, because as with always, I waited until the very last minute to rewatch this week's movie. I did not have time to watch a pick me up movie. I finished this movie and um, had about. 20 minutes to get ready to record this episode. <laughs> so I plan on watching Jojo Rabbit later this evening. <laughs> I need to rewatch The Faculty then. It's been a minute. I kind of want to rewatch The Faculty now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, last but not least, do you recommend this movie? Oh, absolutely. Hell yeah. All right. Um, again, it's it's one of those movies where like I can't recommend this to everyone. Like I couldn't. Yeah. I, I wouldn't like, for example, my roommate, um, former guest on the show, Sam, I would never recommend this movie to her mm-hmm. because it's it doesn't. This sounds mean. It doesn't spoon feed you anything. So yeah. I know she wouldn't like it. Um, I think I've talked about before, I think on the It Comes at Night episode, how her and I argued about that movie for like two months after it came out. <laughs> Because she kept telling me, she's like, that was a bad, stupid movie. And I'm like, it was fucking awesome. I love that movie. She's like, nothing came at night. I'm like, the fear came. <laughs> um, and I feel like 
she would have similar thoughts on this movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, I say it's tough. Um, on the one hand, it is a very, very visual movie. Like, there's little dialogue and even less of a real plot. But it's something unique and distinct that I think anyone would be doing themselves a disservice by not seeing it. Like, it's yeah. just... Like, I know usually when you and I disagree on movies, my argument is, fuck you, Dustin, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But on this one, I am actually going to be very adamant. Get Like, give it a little bit and then give it a rewatch. Okay. Um, Because, yeah, like I said, it was on my rewatch that I was like, oh, wow. Like, okay, this this movie's fucking rad. The The only issue that I could see coming up for me is that, that the pacing is so slow. Like, I get why it's slow, but, man, I feel like this movie is, uh, what's the runtime? It is, I think, an it's hour and not, 48. It's, yeah, I'd say, it doesn't hit two hours. It's, I think you could hit the 90-minute mark, like, cut out of 18 minutes of it just fine. Eh, maybe, maybe. But anyways, um, for my recommendation, I, at the, you know, I think you do need to see it if you've never seen it, but at the same time, I think if, like, you randomly pulled a person off the street and said they have to see this movie... There's an 85% chance that after seeing it, they would tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, that's probably pretty true. Yeah. So, I guess that's a pseudo-recommend. Yeah, I guess. Light recommend. Um, unless you're <laughs> Situationally just... recommend. There you go. That, that works. Uh, Alright, is there anything else we forgot to talk about with Under the Skin? I think that's it. Alright, I think we did it. As much justice as we could do on this show, yeah. I'm sure. And like I said, we like with the strangers, a uh, very a movie that doesn't have a lot going on in it and not a lot of dialogue. That one came out to like 30 minutes, and look at this, we, we came hit an out. Hour. We hit an hour on this episode. Yay. I knew we'd have. See, I knew this was going to be a movie we could actually talk about. I just wish we could have nailed down what the fuck was happening in this movie, but oh well. We got pretty Dude, close. Dude, it's an aliens harvesting humans for something. Yeah. There you go. That's that's um, it. Well, it's simple. Yeah. A little too simple, but you know, it works. Um well, that's it. That's all I got for this week. Thank you for listening everyone. Uh if you do want more of our show, we have a ton of episodes in our back catalog and we release new episodes every Monday. Uh you can find us wherever you get podcasts. Um you sh if you would please subscribe leave us a rating and some feedback we'd really appreciate it because that helps other people find our show uh, you can also follow us on social media if you want we're on facebook twitter instagram and reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist um clue for next week i've got one uh i'll just say never borrow money from family because nothing good comes of it that's it. Yeah, next week is... Whew. Next week's going to be great. So excited. Yeah. Uh, I know you are. <laughs> Mally, is there anything else we need to say before we go? We're going to talk about the Batman off air, about the trailer. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's, but, let's wrap this fucking episode up. I want to talk about Robert. I yeah, want to talk these, about Battinson. These assholes don't get to hear that conversation. So thank you for listening, everyone. Tune in next week where we're talking about family and money and why it's not a good mixture. And as always, Excelsior. Uh, see, I didn't say anything because the female wouldn't have said anything there. So I just wanted I got to it. say anything. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I got it. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Oh.